War, overpopulation, and climate change. Multiple external threats to humanity, but perhaps one of the greatest threats is inside us. Jochen Hotemischlikil is the recipient of the 2018 EASD Novo Nordisk Foundation Diabetes Prize for Excellence. He has studied the causes of the metabolic disease pandemic and potential solutions for 25 years. If we take only a few of these uh, diseases like obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer and respiratory problems and then project their impact, this cost, economic burden of this can reach a level which will require half of world's total GDP. Hunger was a decisive factor in human evolution, not obesity. As a result, our bodies can defend against the threat of hunger and have several metabolic mechanisms to combat starvation. Unfortunately, these mechanisms are not useful anymore since most people have too much food available. Evolution has given us certain strengths and certain weaknesses. And then we have this life, so we can't wait, I mean, to live uh, many, many, many millions of years under these circumstances, so there's a, an adaptation now to this new history, new chapter in, in human life. Jokan has spent his scientific career trying to help humanity deal with these excesses until evolution can catch up. He was born in Riza, Turkey, and studied medicine at Ankara University before moving to Harvard Medical School in the early 1990s. I get to encounter a very interesting disease, an extremely rare disease called Proteus syndrome. The interesting thing about this problem is this young kids develop huge uh, tumors in their legs, feet, uh, back, arms, fingers, and they can reach uh, the size of a football. However, the tumors are benign and comprise huge but healthy fat cells. This meeting with the world of uh, fat and understanding and recognizing the existence of this uh, very interesting uh, cell and, and tissue uh, really got me into my metabolic interests, uh, uh, broader interest in you know, how the metabolic organs operate and how they are connected. Soon after, they identified an immunological pathway that is abnormal in obesity. When they removed it genetically, metabolism improved significantly. The strange immune reaction that is happening in the adipose tissue, which resembles inflammation, was critical uh, for the healthy uh, function of these cells. And when it is up, uh, it really set the stage for disease. So that was an important milestone. Today, this study is a pillar of what has become a huge field, immunometabolism. More breakthroughs came in the following years, such as the finding of an unusual link between obesity, diabetes, and the endoplasmic reticulum. Actually, a few years after we discovered this function of the ER, uh, we also discovered molecules that can actually repair this problem a little bit. So they're not perfect uh, drugs, but uh, they're safe. And uh, they're very effective in uh, the animals. And when we give it to obese diabetic animals, we can see that they have great uh, preclinical efficacy. So they can reduce glucose, they can fix some of the problems. From the very first days of starting his lab, Yukan was interested by a protein called AP2, which resided inside fat cells and interacted with lipids. Hotemishli Gill's group noticed dramatic effects of blocking this protein in many organs. So we were seeing things happening in the liver, for example. Dramatic things. We were seeing things happening in the pancreas. Dramatic things. They spent the following decades trying to identify the signal without much luck. One of Yokan's fellows, who had spent five years looking for the crucial AP2 signal, came to his office. Yokan, if you want me to continue to search in the lipids, I'm going to quit the lab and go to another lab. I cannot study this anymore. So it's obviously not there. I said, okay, 
you know what, uh, let's look into something else. Let's look into our data again. They realized that the signal they were looking for was right in front of their eyes all those years. We never saw it because it was the protein itself. So what we thought to be only present in the adipocyte and inside the adipocyte, it was actually secreted itself and then itself communicated with the liver. When the AP2 gene was blocked in mice, they became virtually immune to such diseases as diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. They looked like young animals. So we thought these guys can keep living forever. <laughs> these animals died almost exactly the same date as their brothers and sisters who carried the gene. And, but the brothers and sisters became very sick, whereas these animals lived happily and healthily until the moment they died. In 2015, Yokan's laboratory developed an antibody against AP2 that partly blocks the function of the AP2 protein in blood. This and other potential drugs are currently being tested. By no means it, it tells us that, okay, we, we found the solution and uh, so the problem will be over or we will be able to produce a, a silver bullet uh, that will take care of all the problems. Of course, we are, I mean, far from that. Uh, although we're, we feel fortunate that at least we made some progress and uh, produced some hope.